Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of A Private Function by Alan Bennett. This is published by Faber and Faber, and um, this is a screenplay, so it's screenplays for the old crowd, A Private Function, Prick Up Your Ears, 102 Boulevard Houseman, and The Madness of King George. It's the blurb here. Starring characters as diverse as George III, Marcel Proust, Joe Orton, and a pig called Betty, Alan Bennett's masterful work for the screen gives as much enjoyment in the reading as it did in the viewing. This classic collection contains a new essay by Alan Bennett, as well as the original introductions to a private function, Prick Up Your Ears and The Madness of King George. Two companion volumes of Alan Bennett's TV plays are published as me, I'm afraid of Virginia Woolf and Rolling Home. So um, I am actually going to watch the movies of these afterwards, but I probably won't include them in this just because, I mean, I'm a book reviewer as opposed to a movie reviewer, really. Uh, but yeah, we'll start with the introduction here. And one of the, it's got some typos in it. So um, yeah, so it says the it, T H E I T, instead of there in the introduction. Well, I thought this was some interesting context here. It says, uh, I felt subsequently that so far as the sex scenes were concerned, the film was a dry run for my beautiful laundrette, where Stephen Frears found a way of making the goings on much more playful and sexy and sexier. It was only towards the end of shooting Prick Up Your Ears that I noticed that in the bedroom scenes, neither of our supposedly uninhibited characters even had their hands under the blankets. To some extent, this restraint can be put down to the times, though even in 1986 this was a little old-fashioned. And were a similar film to be made today, it would need to be much more explicit, though that wouldn't necessarily make it a better film. In the same way, I think the cottaging scene could have been earthier. It was filmed artistically because, had it been more explicit, it would have been censored or received a harsher certificate. I have no experience of cottaging, but I'd be surprised if it was like this. So he's talking about Proust here, and this sounds like me. He says, Proust's way of life, though well known, has not often been presented on the screen. He worked at night and slept much of the day. And so we're moving on to the old crowd here. And uh, as it's a script, really, I think it's going to be the dialogue here that I'm going to talk about the most. But that's what Bennett's best at anyway. Having said that, what I quite liked here was uh, one of the, the stage directions. So we've got exterior English roads day. The van circumnavigates a complex motorway junction, for instance, Spaghetti Junction, seen from overhead. And I love that he uses Spaghetti Junction as the example. I mean, the clue is in the name, Spaghetti Junction, it's a mess. But also it's in Birmingham, which is like where I grew up pretty much, or just around the corner from where I grew up. And we get this little bit of dialogue. So George says, how's mental illness, Oscar? Oscar, I shall shortly be opening another clinic. Pauline, that's three. Oscar, four. George. According to one forecast, the mad will soon outnumber the same. One in three people under the age of 60 already have some experience of a mental institution. Betty. How gruesome. And then Harold goes around with some drinks. Good old Harold. Quite a few of these tabs are actually spelling mistakes, surprising. Someone here says, que je suis enchanté. Nice little bit of French there. This amused me, especially given our, given our current living situation. She's dead, all right. Totty, Totty, Totty. It's what people do, die. We can't notify the authorities. Not now. We'd be in quarantine for months. Yes, imagine that. That'd suck, wouldn't it? And so here we have the introduction to uh, a private function, which is pretty much about like the second post-Second World War and rationing and stuff. And um, I just like this little bit from the introduction here. Um, Though Leeds is a much larger place than the town in the film, there was the same sense that rationing notwithstanding, most people were still doing very nicely, thank you. The same must have been true in country areas. I know of one village that was regularly visited by a hearse, the visit seemingly unrelated to the death rate. Stopped one day by a Ministry of Food inspector, it was found to be carrying a coffin packed with pork, an incident far too theatrical to be put in the film. Life was so often more over the top than anything one could invent. And so uh, we've got the cast and credits for this, and how cool is this? The lead roles were played by uh, Michael Palin and Maggie Smith, uh, and it was a play to begin with. Oi! Oh, you've taken one out of... He just took one of the tabs out. <laughs> I know, you're just trying to help, aren't you, Biggie? Uh, we have this character here, Dr. Swaby, and he says... Um, he's talking about the NHS. He says, well, I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. God, it's a nasty, piss-stayed little country now, is this? It's like this new health service. Do you realise that any little poorly pillock is henceforth going to be able to knock on my door and say, I'm ill. Treat me. Anybody. Me. Yes, that is the idea of a National Health Service, yes. And uh, then we get to prick up your ears, and there's a bit here about uh, Brian Epstein, who is uh, the Beatles manager. Peggy says, now, is it Epstein or Epstein? Better wait. She hesitates and then puts the phone down. Americans are so sensitive about their names. He's not American, is he? Well, he moves in that world. Then we get this quote that was included in the essay at the start, which is a very odd quote. Do you notice I'm limping? Spilt a hot drink over my dress. 
my vagina came up like a football. And I like this little uh, bit here because it's uh, obviously a joke. Who was the father of Oedipus? Laius. Who was his mother? Oh, fuck his mother. And then we have 102 Boulevard Houseman, and this is about uh, Proust. <laughs> and Proust gets this quote here. He says, I must apologise for Lyft. It dates from the period before lifts were invented. And then we move on to The Madness of King George. And what tickles me here is the play version was called The Madness of King George III. But the movie version was just The Madness of King George because they worried if they called it The Madness of King George III, American audiences would think that they'd missed the first two films. And uh, this is, there's some pigs in this. And the king says, I say, these are fine specimens. What are they? Tamworths, what? And yeah, Tamworth pigs. Uh, they're a breed of pig that originated from Tamworth, which is the town that I grew up in. So uh, it's just cool to see those represented in literature. Most famous Tamworth pigs, there were the Tamworth Two, which were these two pigs that escaped, and they were like on the front pages of all the newspapers because they were on the run for months. I think they were eventually re-caught, but they were allowed to live, so that's quite cute. But yeah, anyway, that's uh, the pr a private function by Alan Bennett. There were five different screenplays in there, and I enjoyed reading them. I always enjoy reading screenplays in general. Overall, I'll probably give this like a 3.75 out of 5. It's a bit like reading a short story collection where there are always going to be ones that you enjoy more than others. I like the one about Proust a lot and uh, Prick Up Your Ears was quite funny just for like a sort of you know, quite humorous read. And uh, yeah, I just enjoy Alan, Alan uh, Bennett in general. And also I think he's, it's his dialogue where he really shines and screenplays and uh, plays are the perfect uh, format for him really to, to write that dialogue. So yeah, 3.75 out of 5, probably would recommend, especially if you're a Bennett fan. So yeah, but that's what I made of a private function by Alan Bennett. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you've read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.